Flux is the latest rage in text image AI, and you no longer need to use ComfyUI only to run it. Now it runs on WebUI Forge. Now, for those of you that don't know, WebUI Forge was sort of on a little bit of a hiatus, but the original developer has come back and has made some updates to it. You can see here that we've got some new presets here. I did want to show you guys first that you can run Flux on WebUI Forge. And in terms of optimization, it runs a lot faster on Forge than it does on ComfyUI. Now, if you don't have Forge yet, I'm going to leave a link in the description below for the file that you need, which is on this page. You just have to scroll down until you get to the installation area here. You can install it the old fashioned way with Git and Python. However, I recommend that you use the one click installer right here. Just got to right click, save link as and save it into the drive where you want to install it. And this installer includes Git and Python, so you don't have to worry about installing those things separately. I do have a separate installation video that you can check out, link in the description below as well. I'm going to show you a couple models that you need to run Flux in WebUI Forge. On the discussion tab, you're going to see this post here, one of the major updates of Forge. And as we scroll down here, we see our Flux checkpoints. Those of you that have been keeping up, there's been an NF4 model that's been recently released. There's a new version of V2 that we're going to download today, and it's going to direct you to the Hugging Face page. Or you can also download the FP8 version. I encourage you to download both. You'll see on the Hugging Face page, we have the NF4 V2 version. You just want to go ahead and click download here. And for the regular FP8 version, you want to come to this page. Once again, click on download. Now these models include the VAE and the text encoders. So you don't have to download all that stuff. Just put these models in your checkpoints folder and you're good to go. A few things I want to mention here, especially for those of you that are like me with an eight gigabyte card, you can actually use Flux with six gigabytes, 12 gigabytes, just like we did in ComfyUI in the previous video. But in terms of the speed, it's much better in WebUI Forge. You see, we can get up to 2.5 times faster. I'm not going to go through all of this here, but I encourage you to read it. Basically, the NF4 version is about half the size of the FP8. And further down in the post, you're going to see here if you've got a 3000 or 4000 series GPU, you could utilize the NF4 version of Flex. But if you have a 10,000 or 20,000 GPU, now I'm talking about NVIDIA cards, it may not support the NF4, so you have to use the FP8 version. Now the new version of WebUI Forge has some presets here. You see SDXL, let me zoom in here. You see SD 1.5, XL, Flux, and all. And what's different about Flux is that not only do you have you know, access to your checkpoint models, VAE, you can actually combine, let's say I'm gonna use Clip L for Flux, and I'm gonna load the text encoder here. You can do it at the same time, unlike how it was before. We don't need to do that with these models but anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. Now diffusion in low bits here, I leave it on automatic because it's going to pick the appropriate one. The other thing that is new with WebUI Forge here is swap method, swap location, GPU weights. And basically what this does, it utilizes your VRAM and system RAM in a more efficient way. My current setup is swap method Q, swap location shared, and 7167 for GPU weights. Now I encourage you to read the previous post here. It explains it a lot better than I can. So I'm going to show on the screen a very simple graph of the differences in speed between the FP8 version and the NF4 V2 version. For 1024 by 1024 at 20 steps using Euler, I was averaging about a minute and two seconds for FP8. Whereas with the NF4 version, I was getting consistently 59 seconds. So a difference of only three seconds. At 704 at 1024, I was averaging about 44 seconds for the FP8 model and 40 seconds with the NF4 version. At 832 by 1152, I was averaging about 57 seconds with FP8 and 53 seconds with NF4. Once again, when I used the async method, I saved about three to five seconds when it worked for me. I haven't done a very in-depth comparison between NF4 and FP8, but we have FP8 here on the left, 
and a 4 on the right. Other than the little specks of detail here on her face, everything else looks pretty much the same. There's a few differences in the smaller details like in the hair, but you do see a bit of quality loss with NF4. If I zoom into FP8 here, we see just a tad of artifacting, which is to be expected, but it's even more noticeable with the NF4 model. Take a look at the hair here and the facial texture. The NF4 version, we see it more so in the hair here. The artifacting is a little bit more noticeable and we start to see a little bit more on the texture of her skin here as well. Only noticeable if you're pixel peeping. One last thing I wanted to mention about Flux, there are LORAs now that are supported mostly with the FP8 or FP16 models. Here's the original prompt that I did using the FP8. And this LORA is flat color anime that you can find on Civit AI. There's quite a few that I've been experimenting with. I'll probably do separate video for it. Just keep in mind, most of these LORAs are only compatible with FP8 FP8 or FP16. The NF4 may work, but it's still experimental. So if we head over to Civit AI and I filter for the Loras here, you see there's quite a bit here. We've got some Flex Pony SD 1.5 ones. This is the anime one I just showed you. Here's a Realism Laura from X Labs. Some NSFW ones that I'm sure you guys would want to check out. But there's quite a few available now. And it works like any other Laura. Like if you go into the Laura tab here, if I look for the anime one, I just click on it and it'll automatically populate the LoRa inside the prompt box and you can adjust the weight here accordingly. That being said, stay tuned for the next Web UI Forge video I'm gonna do. I'm gonna talk about some of the updates that were done. And if you haven't installed Forge just yet and you want a complete walkthrough, make sure to check out this video right here. Until that next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.